Fire protection in the village began in 1880. Elijah Welch donated land at the corner of Twining Street and Church Avenue for the first Forestville Firehouse, which was named after him. This stood where the former Johnny Perfetto House was located. In 1881, the Welch Company purchased Bristol's first horse-drawn steam pumper, which provided an endless stream of water, a major advancement in fire protection. Unfortunately, the firehouse burnt to the ground on February 1st, 1894, but the equipment was saved. On August 29th, 1895, a new firehouse located at today's present location was dedicated. The second floor of this facility served as a community center for many years as a voting location and also the first home of the Forestville Boys Club. Early in the 1960s, it was recognized that a new facility was needed to meet modern needs and technology. Today's present firehouse, Forestville's third, was dedicated on May 26, 1962. Forestville from 1919 to 1929 had two firehouses, the second being located at the Bristol Brass Company. Duties were shared by city employees and company staff. Several times during the second half of the 20th century, Forestville residents had to unite in order to prevent a change of location of the firehouse or its possible closure. Each time the village prevailed. Communication Improvements Postal services began in the village in 1850 when the railroad selected the Forestville Center as a station location. Numerous postmasters served until 1869 when J. Fayette Douglas became postmaster. He held this position until 1885. He owned a general store north of the railroad tracks, approximately where the Forestville Boys Club was located. This doubled as a part-time post office, which was quite common during those days. James F. Holden served from 1885 to 1937, with the exception of four years. He purchased the Douglas store but four years later moved to the village center, creating a post office on Central Street, just opposite Broad Street. From the early 1930s to 1955, the post office was located at 195 Central Street, now the home of Sassu's hairstyling. John Kayser assumed postmaster duties in 1937. December 31st, 1938 must have been a sad day in Forestville when the Forestville Post Office was discontinued and made a substation of Bristol. John J. Crowley succeeded Kayser as the substation superintendent on April 1st, 1953. During the 1950s, the village residents had to mobilize to resist moving all village mail carriers to the Bristol Post Office. This would make closure of the Forestville branch easy. Led by Reverend Richard Pearson of the Bethesda Lutheran Church and supported by Congressman Abraham Ribicoff, this move was rescinded. On March 24, 1955, after a 13-year delay, today's post office on East Main Street was opened. Library services within the village. Library services in the village, through the generosity of the Sessions family, 
began on February 6, 1904, when the Forestville Library and Reading Room opened on East Main Street. The Sessions family donated the use of the building as well as paying for the heat, lighting, and librarian's salary. On November 1, 1947, the Sessions family sold this facility and land, but graciously donated a piece of land at the corner of Circle and Central Street for a permanent library facility. Plans were drawn up and financing planned when city librarian Celia Critchley convinced Arthur Manross to donate his father's vacant home as a library. This facility, which opened in 1950, would be dedicated to his father, Frederick N. Manross. While the Manross home was being prepared for library services, the Sarah E. Reynolds Annex or Lower School Building served as a temporary part-time library facility from 1947 to 1950. With the changing complexion of library services and with increasing population, a larger and more sophisticated facility was needed. Opening in 1975, this is today's Frederick N. Manross Memorial Library. Newspaper Communication On March 9, 1871, with Reverend Charles Riggs as editor, the Bristol Press published the first edition of its weekly newspaper. For nearly a century and a half, this local newspaper has served the community as a source of information and enjoyment. Arthur S. Barnes became managing editor in 1902. The press remained under Barnes family control for the next 83 years. In 1910, it became a semi-weekly paper, and six years later, in 1916, it initiated daily publication. Michael Schroeder, the current owner, purchased the paper in 2002 from the faltering Journal Register Publishing Company that was threatening to shut down operations. Telephone services within the community. The first telephone exchange in the world was started in 1878. Only three years later, in 1881, Bristol received an exchange charter from the Connecticut Telephone Company. This company's name was changed a year later to Southern New England Telephone. Forestville resident Elijah N. Welch became the second telephone owner within the community. He successfully connected his residence with his clock factories. The local party line system, as well as the development of expanded telephone numbers necessitated by continued population growth were described. This included the Ludlow designation utilized within our community. Water and Sewage Services Water and Sewage Services began in 1884 with a charter secured by a private group of investors with the intent of making profit from this venture. Pipes were laid and three reservoirs to serve the town were developed, one each in Bristol, Plymouth, and Harlington. Water services did not reach Forestville until the beginning of the 20th century. When Bristol became a city in 1911, the days of the rich aristocracy running utilities for profit were limited. In 1913, exercising the rights given by the city charter, the Bristol Water Department was taken over by municipal control. The development 
of electricity and the trolley system. The Bristol Electric Company, which started in 1886, was merged into the Bristol and Plainville Tramway Company when it began in 1895. The trolley system was the first transportation available to all community citizens. The first trolley trip was an excursion to Lake Compounds on August 11, 1895. The next day, routes between Bristol and Plainville began service. Trolleys traveled from Plainville via East Main Street to the Forestville Center. From here, they ran up Broad Street to Todd Lot and then along Pine Street to the Y at the junction of Middle Street. From here, riders could either journey to Lake Compounds or continue to the center of Bristol. From the center, at various times, routes were extended to Terryville, the Maple End, and along Federal Hill to Woodland Street. The trolley company, in addition to providing transportation, also sold electricity, gas, and steam heat to residential and business clients. Trolley services to Lake Compounds ended in 1932 when the automobile was replacing it as a more convenient and personal means of transportation. Bristol closed the entire trolley system three years later. Many of the trolley motormen and conductors continued as bus drivers with the Bristol Traction Company. Education within the community. Early settlers of the New Cambridge Society strongly valued home, church, and education. The first mention of a society school was in 1745. A six-month school was established on Federal Hill in 1748 and opened the next year. Because of the widespread population distribution, schools were also opened on Chippins Hill in 1754 and in the Stafford District in 1764. A small one-room school also served six families in the Redstone Hill area. By 1785, when Bristol officially became a town, there were 10 separate districts with schoolhouses. Amongst the 13 separate districts that eventually functioned within the community, three were located in Forestville. District 13 included the eventual Sarah E. Reynolds School and Green Hill School. District 5, the Mary A. Callan and Ellen P. Hubble Schools. And District 6, Stafford and the Farmington Avenue School. The district system, which lasted until 1942, proved inefficient and provided little uniformity. Each of the 13 separate districts hired their own teachers, bought supplies, and assessed school taxes. Bidding wars for teachers often took place, with the wealthy districts winning out over the poorer ones. Starting in 1942, a superintendent of schools and Board of Education would manage the city's united school system. The Academy in Forestville earlier had become one of three districts permitted to teach advanced secondary school courses. The Federal Hill and Southside schools were the other two. A three-year advanced course was developed in 1883 and was extended to a four-year curriculum in 1885. 
Nine students became the first Bristol graduating class in 1886. A year later, 77 students were located at a high school site at the South Side School. The necessity for a permanent high school was apparent and supported in 1888. Land was purchased at the corner of Summer and Center Street with construction beginning in 1890. Opening in the fall of 1891, his first class graduated in the spring of 1892. A large addition was added to this building in 1908. With the student population growing rapidly and people disturbed by increasing school taxes, Albert F. Rockwell offered land on South Street for the construction of a new high school and athletic fields if the city constructed a boulevard leading to Bristol's business center. Ground was broken in 1921 with a million dollar school opening in 1922 with 560 students. By 1929, the student population had outgrown the new facility. Freshmen were returned to the former high school on Summer Street for the next 30 years. This building would become known as the Freshman Building. The Freshman Building, now the home of the Bristol Historical Society, closed in 1959 when Bristol Eastern and Bristol Central High Schools opened in the fall of that year. Education within Forestville. The first school in Forestville after its founding in 1833 was the Academy School. Serving students from both the Stafford District and the Village, it opened in 1847. Academy Street, which was recognized by the town in 1852, was named after this school. The land for the school was donated by the Manross family and originally was to revert back to the family if not being used for education. The school, which faced Academy Street, was located where the Sarah E. Reynolds Annex building was later situated. Sarah E. Reynolds served as principal here until her retirement in 1896. Fenella Nellie E. Hills replaced her and served the Academy School and later the Forestville School until her retirement in 1927. The building was closed in 1909 with the building of a new brick building to its north. The building was sold to the Plainville Grange, number 54, in 1910 for $410. The Academy School stood approximately in today's St. Matthew Church parking lot, with its playground being the location of today's church. The District 13 School, later renamed Sarah E. Reynolds School. When the New Brick School opened in 1909, this building was known as the District No. 13 School until 1920, and from 1920 to 1928 as the Forestville School. In 1928, it was renamed again after the former teacher principal of the Academy School, Sarah E. Reynolds. She had started teaching at 16 years of age, around 1855. She left teaching temporarily to become a nurse in the Union Army during the worst fighting of the Civil War. She returned to Forestville to teach and become principal during her last 29 years of her career. She retired in 1896. 
Fanny A. Green joined Reynolds in 1875 and Fenella Nellie Hills in 1877. The three of them really provided the village children their education for the next two decades. Nellie Hills would succeed Reynolds as principal in 1896 and also would serve as principal of the new District 13 school until she retired in June 1928. A lower school known as the Annex so with six additional rooms serves the primary division of grades kindergarten through grade three. This building probably served the students prior to the opening of Green Hill School in 1928. The Reynolds School closed in June of 1962, but due to increasing village populations, reopened from September 1964 to June of 68. It later served as an administrative annex housing the special education division of the Board of Education. The Green Hill School, which opened on September 4, 1928, became the second District Number 13 school. What a fitting tribute it was that the school was named after two venerable teachers who had dedicated more than a century of combined service within the community. Fanny A. Green, a primary teacher at the academy school in a very unusual situation, transferred to the Green Hill School, which was named after her, and taught here for four years before her retirement in 1932. There had been a rapid growth, especially in the southern section of District 13, during the three previous years. Parents in this area were concerned with the safety of their children crossing in the village center with its increased traffic, as well as having railroad crossing concerns. Plans for a new school were initiated in 1926. Green Hill School opened in 1928 with 220 kindergarten through 8th grade students. The Green Hills building was designed by Forestville resident Edwin Manross Burr of the Hartford firm of W.F. Brooks. The two-story building included two downstairs playrooms for boys and girls during inclement weather. Four rooms were included on each of the two floors, with a principal's office on the first floor and a teacher's room located on the second. A kindergarten room was located at the west end and included a separate entrance. This could accommodate 250 people and could double as a community meeting area. A major addition designed by Bristol architect Harold Hayden was required and opened in the fall of 1955. Because of overcrowding, in the school year 1951-52, the 8th graders from Green Hills were transferred back to the Sarah E. Reynolds School, and a year later, the 7th grade class was also transferred. The new two-story addition included eight classrooms, one room for the physically handicapped from the entire city, a library, a home economics room, administrative offices, a combined gymnasium, auditorium, cafeteria, and locker rooms with showers. This building, after serving approximately 84 years on Pine Street, was taken down and an ultra-modern K-8 facility was opened in September of 2012. 
village residents agitated that its name remain the Green Hill School when there was some discussion of a change. Stafford School, established in 1764, was one of the first three district schools within the community. This rural school in District 6 was located in the area of the Boardman Wells Clock Company and probably served the children of its employees near the Middle Road Turnpike, today's Route 6. It appears that this school might have been reconstructed at some point at 607 Stafford Avenue, directly across the street from Mountain View Avenue. It is now utilized as a private residence. This school closed in 1930. Students transferred to the modern Farmington Avenue School in 1930, remaining here until an ultra-modern Stafford School was opened in the early 1950s. Jane Polehill served as teacher and first principal of the Farmington Avenue facility. When the Stafford School opened on Louisiana Avenue in the early 1950s, students from areas close to the school were transferred. Others remained at the Farmington Avenue building. Percy G. Porter would become first principal of the new Stafford School. The new building was outgrown by increasing student population twice during the 1950. Students in 1958 were transferred to Green Hill School until an addition could be completed. The Farmington Avenue School closed in 1961, at which time it became the Board of Education facility. It presently is the home of the Dumont Agency. Students from the western extremes of the village started their education at the small brick schoolhouse near the corner of Pine and Middle Streets. Mary A. Callan taught here starting in 1880 and would be joined by Ellen P. Hubble in 1896 at the school that Miss Hubble had previously attended. Several different buildings and addition were utilized to address the constantly increasing student population. In the early 1900s, a new 5th District School, also known as the East Bristol School, was constructed. Mary A. Callan, a lifelong resident of Plainville, taught at these schools from 1880 to 1924, becoming principal in 1905. During her 44-year career, she spent one year at the Old Stafford School with the remainder in the East Bristol District 5 schools. She retired suddenly on September 25, 1924, due to ill health and died one month later. In 1926, a new combination brick and wooden building was constructed. In 1933, 500 people attended a dedication ceremony at this building, dedicating the school as the Mary A. Callan School. This school was added to several times. In 1951, the wooden portions of the 1926 building were replaced by the now familiar brick building. Large additions to this building took place both in 1953 and 1959. The Mary A. Callan School is now home to the Hospital of Central Connecticut Family Health Center. Who can you identify from this Mary A. Callan baseball team? Possibly one of the players shown is in attendance 
at this session. During the early 1920s, the 5th District or East Bristol School could no longer accommodate its increasing student population. What was supposed to be a temporary school with four teachers opened on 5th Avenue, later 5th Street, in 1920. Ellen P. Hubble, a member of the second Bristol High School graduating class in 1887, returned to Bristol and served within its educational community for 52 years. She was named third grade teacher and acting principal at the Fifth Street School from 1923 to 1925. Ms. Hubble retired in 1941 because of a mandatory retirement requirement when a teacher turned 70. Shortly after her retirement, the school was named in her honor. She continued within education, becoming a founding member and, in 1946, first president of the Connecticut Association of Retired Teachers. A more modern and larger Ellen P. Hubble School was constructed at 90 West Washington Street in 1961 and still continues to serve the community. The old Hubble School was taken down the same year. The 1950s and 1960s were a time of rapid population growth in the Forestville and Northeast sections of Bristol and required a tremendous and constant expansion of school facilities. The Westwood School off of Stafford Avenue at 85 Grove Street opened in 1957 and due to overcrowding four years later required an addition. This facility was constructed to relieve the pressure from the Stafford School, which was utilizing double session scheduling as well as transporting students to other schools until an addition could be completed. Westwoods joined the ranks of the K-8 schools and presented comprehensive and exemplary academic and athletic accomplishments. Its closure several years later often baffled the public. There was still an increasing population in the area and new school development. With athletic facilities both indoor and outdoor and room for future building expansion, it appeared to have been a somewhat misguided move. It would appear that nothing was wrong with the physical facility, which now houses the Douglas A. Beals Senior Community Center, the Bristol Burlington Health District offices and clinics, and the Region 19 Probate Court for the State of Connecticut. The Mountain View School, located at 71 Vera Road, opened as a K-6 school in 1967 as a response to the student population growth in the northeast section of the community. While the building was being completed, grades 4 through 6 were housed temporarily at Bristol Eastern High School for two years. The St. Matthew School on Welch Drive became the sixth church-run elementary school when it opened in 1961. The Sister Servants of the Immaculate Heart of Mary from Pennsylvania were selected to staff the school. While construction of the school was being completed, an attempt to temporarily use the old St. John Church on Academy Street was refused because of fire code violations. Classes were held in the St. Matthew and St. Joseph Church Halls 
as well as at the old Edgewood School. A convent was constructed on the former property of James Hart Welch, later owned by Bristol Public Works Director Oscar Anderson. The St. Matthew School is one of two Catholic elementary schools still in existence within the community, the other one being St. Joseph's. The final school officially in the Forestville area is Bristol Eastern High School, which opened in September 1959 with its first principal, George Perry. With the old Bristol High School officially closed, Bristol Central High School came into existence at the same site with Principal Charles Marsh. Clarence A. Bingham, who lived on Bingham Street, was born in the village in 1853. He was a teacher and principal at the Northside School from 1883 to 1912. He died unexpectedly during surgery for appendicitis. His entire student body traveled by trolley to Forestville on a very snowy winter day to attend his funeral at Asbury Methodist Church. When the present Bingham School was built in 1916, it was dedicated in his honor. The beginning of religious services within the village. The first public religious services in the Forestville area can be traced back to 1850. Prior to this, village members traveled to the Methodist Episcopal Church in Bristol, often during extremely difficult weather and travel conditions. It is surmised that the first religious services in Forestville were conducted at the Lot Jerome House later the Amos Sage home. This was located on the west side of Stafford Avenue between Brook Street and Douglas Road. During good weather, services were held outside in a grove on Church Avenue, now owned by St. Matthew's Church. Like other later religions in Forestville, they utilized private homes, the academy school, the old Forestville Firehouse, or the second floor of Pierpont's store, later known as Deming's store, built in 1852 at the corner of Stafford Avenue and Washington Street. On September 30th, 1855, the Forestville Methodist Episcopal Church was organized and became the first church on what would become known as Church Hill. In 1863, the congregation purchased the former Trinity Episcopal Church on the corner of Maple and Summer Streets in Bristol, and in 1864, moved it to the site of today's Asbury United Methodist Church. This land had been purchased from Elijah Manross. A parsonage was built in 1870. Unfortunately, this church was struck by lightning on May 3, 1900, and burnt to the ground. Through the zealous efforts of the congregation and the generosity of William E. Sessions, a new brick edifice was constructed and ready for services in December of the same year. Its construction resembled a miniature Methodist Episcopal Church from Bristol. This church, quite amazingly, was debt-free at the time of its first service. The Bethesda Lutheran Church and the Lebanon Lutheran Church. A wave of Swedish immigrants was evident in the second half of the 19th century. Arriving as early as 1871, they were the first non-English-speaking immigrants to arrive in the Forestville area. 
In 1880, they established the second Swedish Lutheran Church in Connecticut, the Bethesda Evangelical Lutheran Church. In 1886, a small church was built on Academy Street. With their population increasing, a larger facility was constructed in 1907 next door to their original church. The Swedish arrived in Bristol later than in Forestville. They traveled to the village to worship. Known as the Swedish Parade, they became tired of this trip for services. In 1887, the 56 members established their own congregation known as the Lebanon Lutheran Church. A church was constructed on Stern Street with the first service conducted in 1891. The two congregations worked together and shared pastors for nearly a half century. In 1947, they decided to become independent from each other, with each securing their own minister. In the early 1960s, with both suffering declining enrollment and inadequate financing, they decided to merge as a new church called the Gloria Day Lutheran Church. Services were temporarily held at the Westwood School beginning in 1962. They worshiped there until the Camp Street facility was completed. The first service was held on Christmas Eve, 1963, with the church being officially dedicated in March of 1964. The Bethesda Church, which still stands, has served as the Knights of Columbus Hall, Hillside Community Church, and now the Bristol Bible Chapel is located there. Their first church, built in 1886, which stood next door, is now home of the Academy Auto Sales. The Lebanon Lutheran Church was remodeled in 1957 and now serves as the Salvation Army Citadel. The Swedish immigrants practice not only the Lutheran faith, but also the Congregational and Baptist religions. The Congregationalists of Forestville united with Plainville around 1890 and built a church on Washington Street, just over the town line. This church was completely destroyed in 1942 by a tornado or twister that wreaked havoc a few minutes earlier in the village center. A Swedish Baptist church was established in 1910 when 29 Swedish members withdrew from the Bristol Baptist Church because they had a desire for liturgy in their native language. A small congregation known as the Goodwin Street Baptist Church was formed. This would eventually become the Grace Baptist Church located on the corner of Louisiana Avenue and King Street. Many of the Irish that worked at the copper mines transitioned to the centers of either Bristol or Forestville in order to secure industrial employment. Reverend Luke Daly from the mines assisted the Bristol Irish in establishing the first Roman Catholic Church within the community. A small wooden church known as St. Joseph's was constructed in 1855 on Queen Street on the eastern side of the Federal Hill Green. This parish remained a mission church under the auspices of St. Mary's of New Britain until 1864 when it became an independent congregation. Reverend Michael Rodden became its first resident pastor serving 33 years until 1901. 
During the second half of the 19th century, the Irish of St. Joseph's were joined by a large influx of non-Irish European Catholics. Each of these ethnic groups would eventually form their own church within the community. The French Canadians in 1907 established St. Anne's. The Polish in 1918 established St. Stanislaus Church, and the Italians in 1920 built St. Anthony's on School Street. By 1891, the parish had exploded from its initial 200 members to a congregation numbering 3,000. Reverend Rodden, for the 10 previous years, journeyed to Forestville each Sunday to conduct services at the old Welch Firehouse in order to alleviate the crowding. The St. Matthew Roman Catholic Church in Forestville. The St. Matthew Roman Catholic Church separated from St. Joseph's on September 20th, 1891, becoming a mission of Our Lady of Mercy Church in Plainville. Unfortunately, the church started with controversy over its placement. Many members wanted the site to be on the Spellman property on Washington Street, while others wanted it located on Church Avenue on land donated by James Hart Welch, who lived across the street. Against the architect's advice, Church Avenue was selected. The church would now have to be built on a former cranberry bog. Reverend Henry T. Walsh of Our Lady of Mercy began the excavation of the foundation in November 1891 and a cornerstone was laid in January of 1892. The first services were held in the basement in May of that year. Unfortunately, an economic downturn occurred during this period, delaying the construction for five years. Dedication ceremonies were held in 1897 with the completion of the church. In 1918, St. Matthew's became an independent parish under the leadership of Reverend William Laughlin. Ironically, shortly after St. Matthew's became a separate parish, Reverend Laughlin was transferred to St. Joseph's. The St. Matthew Church, through the first half of the 20th century, saw a tremendous growth in its population. With the expectation of building a larger church, land was purchased on Louisiana Avenue. In 1957, however, the bishop decided to split the parish. Parishioners north of Farmington Avenue would be reassigned to a new church known as St. Gregory the Great. A new St. Matthew church was dedicated in the 1980s, at which time 3,000 families belonged to the congregation. The old church was torn down at this time in order to accommodate parking. St. John's Episcopal Church The beginning of the Episcopal religion in Forestville can be traced back to 1885 when the rector from the Trinity Episcopal Church in Bristol conducted monthly services at the old Fireman's Hall on Church Avenue. These members had formally worshipped at the Church of Our Savior in Plainville. Services continued here until 1887 when, by invitation, they transferred to the First Bethesda Lutheran Church for weekly worship. James Hart Welch donated the land for a small chapel in 1899. This was located on Academy Street, directly behind the old St. Matthew Church parking lot. 
the first services and consecration in a small brown American Gothic style chapel were conducted on Easter Sunday, 1901. The chapel was built by Forestville contractor J. Austin Wooster. The St. John's Chapel would remain a mission church of the Trinity Episcopal Church until 1925 when it was authorized by the diocese to become an independent church. A parish house was added to the church in 1927. In 1938, the color was changed to brown and yellow, and in 1953, to the familiar white church with black trim. A vicarage, or pastor's home, was purchased at 21 Academy Street in 1956. This was known as the Fry House, but was originally built by Elijah Manros in 1847. The church was moved to its present location on Stafford Avenue in 1961. The Christian Science Church In 1919, a Christian Science Society was organized in Bristol to serve the needs of this religious community. For nearly 12 years, various buildings within Bristol were utilized to conduct services and to maintain a reading room. In 1931, they purchased the large high street dwelling house of Samuel Emerson Root and later Mr. and Mrs. Edward Newell. This house was altered to provide an adequate auditorium and necessary room for Sunday school. The first services were held on October 11, 1931. They remained here until 1964 when a new facility was dedicated on King Street. They no longer remain here. This building is now the home of the Higher Ground Christian Church. This church, led by Pastor Gary DeRosa, is a non-denominational church with a mission of helping the hurting on the streets of Connecticut and to provide the lost with a place to call home. Forestville and the surrounding communities are certainly blessed in having two congregations serving the religious, social, and personal needs of the Afro-American population. The first is the Beulah A.M.E. Zion Church. Tucked away in the heart of Forestville, in the valley at the bend of Circle Street, stands the Beulah African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. Founded on June 13, 1956, and known then as the Bristol Community A.M.E. Zion Mission Church, it was led by Reverend William J. Hooker. This was the first church in the area to serve the African American population. With small numbers at the beginning, weekly prayer services were first held at private homes. As the congregation grew, the Forestville Boys Club and the Odd Fellows Hall in Bristol were utilized. The name was officially changed in 1957 to the Beulah A.M.E. Zion Church. A building was purchased on Meadow Street in 1960, but was lost to the redevelopment movement in 1961. The present site was purchased on October 1, 1962. Over time, there have been several structural changes an increase in membership. Many church-affiliated organizations established and a variety of community involvements. Several pastors have served the congregation and in 1980, 
the first of several female pastors was assigned. In 2012, the congregation merged with a second Connecticut church after 60 years from its start in 1956, the Beulah AME Zion Church continues to grow and contribute to its membership and to the community. Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church was founded in 1979 by the late pastor, Eddie C. Whitehead. His vision was to have the first Missionary Baptist Church within Bristol. Services were first held at private homes, as well as at the Ellen P. Hubble School on West Washington Street. Faith Bible Church of Plainville in 1999 invited this congregation to conduct services there until a suitable church was located. A permanent location was found at 618 Stafford Avenue with the first service being held on December 29, 2003. This is now their permanent home. Two churches, one that was initially housed at the former Bethesda Lutheran Church and another that now occupies it are the final two village churches. The Hillside Community Church a non-denominational Christian church relocated to 435 Broad Street from Academy Street. Through contemporary worship and fellowship, its mission is to assist people in the development of a personal relationship with Jesus. The Bristol Bible Chapel on Academy Street, another non-denominational church, is a spiritual family who stresses the preeminence of Jesus Christ through the gospel and Bible study, similar to the early days of Christianity. It is now time to establish the perimeters of what is known as Forestville, the village. The boundaries as described now are from official and primary sources established by the Price and Lee Company of New Haven. They were contracted by the town and later City of Bristol to annually publish a city directory listing the homes, business addresses, and occupations of our city's residents. The streets within a community were designated as either being part of Bristol or Forestville. No other area of the community was given such distinction. Throughout the first 70 years of these publications, the following boundaries of Forestville were quite clearly defined. The southern borders of the village are the town lines of Plainville and Southington. On the west, Middle Street connected to King Street as far as Louisiana Avenue divides Forestville from Bristol. The northern boundary begins with the entire length of Louisiana Avenue connected to Brook Street. Brook Street becomes part of the western border as it travels north to Farmington Avenue. Farmington Avenue traveling east to Camp Street completes the northern perimeter. Finally, Camp Street and the Plainville Town Line form the eastern edge of Forestville. 